Good morning. We have general questions. Question one, Jane Baxter. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what its assessment is of the effectiveness of the reformed Scottish Medicines Consortium drug appraisal process and whether it considers that further reform is required. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Positive progress has been made by the Scottish Medicines Consortium. The Scottish Government has been monitoring the changes very closely and have said that we will now review how the changes are working and are open to considering any further steps that can be taken. Jane Baxter. Thank you. Last month, the SMC rejected abiraterone before chemotherapy for use in NHS Scotland. This was despite emphatic support from clinicians who described the treatment as a paradigm shift and patients who told Prostate Cancer UK they would feel cheated, dismayed, marginalised and abandoned in the event of SMC rejection. Now that the SMC has rejected the drug, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm her understanding of why the drug was rejected and what steps have been taken to revisit a decision that Prostate Cancer UK has called an intolerable blow to hundreds of men with incurable prostate cancer? Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I say to, to Jane Baxter that uh, the, the first decisions were made in October uh, from last year to March this year. Out of all of those decisions made under the, the new arrangements, there have been 15 medicines considered under the new processes, of which 10 were positive decisions, 5 were negative decisions. Um, on the uh, issue of uh, abiraterone, um, the Scottish Government absolutely recognises that patients and their representatives will be very disappointed by this decision. Uh, there's a clear demand for this drug and around 100 patients in Scotland are already on this treatment through the reformed individual patient treatment request system. However, we have encouraged the Scottish Medicines Consortium and the manufacturer to find a resolution as soon as possible and we'll keep uh, the member informed of that. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary be aware that the IPTR system, the Individual Patient Treatment Request, was supposed to end last year in May 2014 and PACS, the peer-approved clinical system, come into force then. I have an email uh, regarding a constituent's case from NHS uh, Lothian Cancer, which says, thank you for your IPTR request. Now, I thought these had ended. Could the Cabinet Secretary clarify the status of the PACS system? I can say to, to Christine Graham that uh, we've taken a decision that we want to carefully pilot the introduction of PACs, and that's to ensure that there are no unintended consequences of reducing the increased access to medicines being seen uh, at the moment. The current approach has seen hundreds more patients in Scotland accessing treatments as a, as a result of the changes made last year. Guidance is due to issue this month to begin piloting from April. Uh, we're going to carefully monitor the situation together with the decisions being made by the Scottish Medicines Consortium under their new approach. Uh, as more and more decisions are made by the Scottish Medicines Consortium, this will reduce the reliance on individual requests in the longer term. Question number two, Rhoda Grant. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to encourage teenage girls to become and remain more active. Minister, Jimmy Hepburn. Increasing the number of girls meeting recommended levels of physical activity is a priority for the Scottish Government. That's why we invest half a million pounds annually through Sports Scotland into the Active Girls programme to increase girls and young women's participation in PE, sport and physical activity. In addition, between 2007 and 2019, Sports Scotland will have invested some £130 million in the Active Schools Network, which increases the number of good quality opportunities for children and young people to get active. And with the help of investment from Sports Scotland and Education Scotland, the Healthy Living Survey results from 2014 confirmed that 96% of schools were meeting the target level of PE provision, up from below 10% in 2004-2005. Rhoda Grant. The Minister will be aware that a lot of uh, young women drop out of uh, physical activity and does he agree with me that schools need to offer uh, phys physical activity that attracts young women and we also need to develop role models to encourage them to take part. However, women in sport tend to be stereotyped when they are being interviewed and talked about in the media. The focus falls on their looks, their relationships, rather than their contribution to physical activity. Can I ask what the Scottish Government is doing um, to influence schools to ensure they offer physical activity in a way that is attractive to young women and also to address the sexist coverage of women in sport? Minister. Can I thank Rhoda Grant very much for uh, the question? I would uh, recognise the points that uh, she is making. We uh, understand that there is a, an issue in terms of uh, the uh, levels of activity that uh, teenage girls uh, have in terms of physical 
uh, activity as opposed to uh, teenage boys. I very much agree with the point she makes about ensuring that we are offering uh, physical activity opportunities that young uh, girls will engage in. I have seen firsthand that that does uh, happen in many uh, locations across the country. We should see that uh, rolled out uh, elsewhere. In terms of the uh, issue about uh, the uh, public uh, perception of uh, women in sport, I also agree uh, with the point that she is making very much. Uh, for example, we know that uh, sports media coverage uh, heavily favours men. For every 53 articles written about male sporting stars, there is just one uh, penned about women. We need to uh, ensure that, they, uh, that uh, we are seeing uh, better and uh, more equitable uh, coverage. Uh, obviously, there is a limit to what the uh, government can do. Uh, in that regard, we did, of course, have the Women in Sport Working Group, uh, which reported uh, last year and uh, uh, women in the media uh, as part of the, uh, uh, was part of that work, and that has reported. And we are uh, have the Sports Scotland taking forward the work of that group through their Equalities Group, which reports to Sports Scotland Board. Question three, Patricia Ferguson. To ask the Scottish Government how many dermatology inpatient in beds will be available at the new South Glasgow Hospital. Cabinet Secretary, Shona Robinson. Six inpatient dermatology beds are currently planned for the South Glasgow University Hospital. However, after operating at this revised level for two months, the service will undertake a review to consider the impact in terms of service provision and waiting times for planned admissions. Once this review has been completed, a final de decision will be taken on the bed numbers. Patricia Ferguson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response, but I am surprised to hear that a review will take place after a cut in the number of dermatology beds, because NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde have told me that the dermatology inpatient beds currently have an 81 per cent occupancy rate, which means that the new South Glasgow Hospital will see a cut of 57 per cent in the number of beds available, a cut from 14 to 6, as she said. So can the Cabinet Secretary reassure my constituents whose treatment plans require them to be treated as inpatients that this will continue in spite of this large reduction in the number of beds in that particular speciality? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I say to Patricia Ferguson that, of course, because of medical advances and more effective treatments and the increased use of outpatient treatments, that that's dramatically reduced the need for inpatient beds in dermatology. And as a, a result, we've seen across Scotland a dramatic decrease in the number of dermatology beds required. Of course, importantly, the Dermatology Service in Glasgow has received additional funding for four additional nurse specialist posts to support an increased day patient and outpatient service. So there is a development of the day patient and outpatient service, which will uh, mean uh, that uh, there is less of a reliance uh, on inpatient beds. The ward has a dedicated day treatment area, which will allow many patients to attend for treatment and return to their homes rather than be admitted. But I do appreciate that inpatient care and treatment will still be required for a number of patients and the board will make its final decision on the number of appropriate beds after the two-month review and if six isn't adequate then more beds will be provided. Question number four, Alex Ferguson. Uh, thank you, presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government when it will implement the recommendations of the Beef 2020 report. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. We are planning to publish a response to the recommendations of the Beef 2020 report next Friday. Alex Ferguson. Amazing how a well-timed parliamentary question can bring about a response like that. Um, but the, 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 I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary doesn't need me to tell him that the beef sector in particular is facing a very uncertain future under the CAP reforms, which is not being done any favours by the continuing lack of detail from his department on many aspects of the reforms, or indeed on the apparent inability of the new IT system to cope with the demands that are being made of it. The recommendations of the Beef 2020 report, which the, C which the Cabinet Secretary himself commissioned and warmly welcomed when it was published last August, could give a much-needed boost to the sector's confidence. One of the principal recommendations was that a full EID system for cattle be implemented by 2016. Mm -hmm. um, if that is to be done, then it surely needs to be put underway now. Has it begun? If not, why not? And if it hasn't been started, what's stopping him? Cabinet Secretary. Thanks. <coughs> I like the idea that I timetabled the announcement for next Friday due to the parliamentary question tabled by Alec Ferguson, but I'm afraid it's not true. However, he does raise a number of issues, and briefly I just want to say that the Beef 2020 report is very important to the future of the beef sector in Scotland. However, as he is aware, some of the recommendations which are for the Scottish Government, not all of them, some are for the red meat sector itself, uh, require discussion with the European Commission, and as he is well aware, 
Uh, sometimes these discussions are, are tricky and take some time. However, we are now confident we can make a number of announcements uh, next week, uh, as I indicated. In terms of the IT system, you will also be aware that we have a particularly complex common agricultural policy to implement this year. And all administrations, all administrations are facing similar challenges to the Scottish Government. But the good news is that our, our IT system opened this week for the single application forms to be filled in by uh, applicants. And whilst it's within the first few days of the system, and there may well be teething problems, uh, they will be sorted as quickly as possible. Uh, th there are many advantages to the online system that were not there before. Uh, and of course, he will also recall that uh, he, along with many other members in this chamber and the wider industry, asked for many of the additional complexities that are characteristic uh, of the new common agricultural policy to make sure it was suited to Scottish circumstances. So we do have a, a complex policy to implement, but we are going to implement it, and it is going to make a positive difference to Scottish agriculture. Question number five, Richard Baker. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire Councils on the Aberdeen City Region Deal bid and what assistance it will provide to support the bid. Cabinet Secretary, Keith Brown. I would refer the member to the answer I gave to Lewis MacDonald during portfolio questions on Wednesday, the 11th of March. That was uh, question number 04104, where I highlighted that we are working with Aberdeen City Council and Aberdeenshire Council to establish a detail of what a city deal for the region is intended to deliver. Richard Baker. Given the announcement by the UK Government yesterday that it will start negotiations now on uh, an Aberdeen City Region deal, uh, will, the Minister, will the Cabinet Secretary recognise that a clear statement from the Scottish Government that it supports the deal in principle will be vital to its success? Will he give that clear indication today and also agree that, that the Scottish Government must stand ready to provide financial support for the deal along with both the UK Government and the local authorities? Cabinet Secretary. I will have made that support clear to uh, Aberdeen Council by writing directly to the leader who had written to us uh, previously and also meeting with the leader of Aberdeen Council uh, yesterday at the Scottish Cities Alliance. We have made clear we are more than happy to work uh, with Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire Councils. I think that also comes on the back of substantial investment in the North East. I could mention the £187 million in transport infrastructure, the construction which has started on the AWPR of £745 million worth of investment, the £3 billion investment in the A96 Aberdeen-Timberness Road, also £407 million in health uh, infrastructure investment since 2007. So we have a track record of providing infrastructure in that area, and we're more than happy to work with our colleagues in Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire Council to see what more we can do in terms of a city deal. Alice McInnes. I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary agrees with me that a city deal could help the region remain competitive. Um, to drive it forward, will he ensure that his civil servants and government agencies put themselves at the disposal of the team who are developing the detail of the bid to ensure that the momentum is not lost, given the announcement yesterday? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I can confirm that uh, civil servants have already been engaging with Aberdeen City Council and of course that will continue as we work our way through the bid. We received the bid itself around 10 days ago. There's quite a lot in the bid, but that continual support from Scottish Government civil servants and indeed from other government-related bodies will be assured as we go forward. Question number six, Nigel Don. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the crisis report, benefit sanctions and hopelessness, homelessness, a scoping report. Minister, Margaret Burgess. This report is yet more evidence that the current sanctions regime is not working. It shows that evidence is emerging that sanctions may increase the risk of homelessness, potentially undermining the substantial progress we have made in tackling homelessness in Scotland in recent years. We have long made our concerns clear that sanctions are unfair, they are punitive and they do nothing to help people who are already struggling to cope. The Scottish Government is doing what it can with the resources and powers it has to help those affected, and this includes investing around £296 million from 2013-14 to 2015-16 to limit the damage of the UK Government's reforms. We cannot fully mitigate all the effects of welfare changes, but we will continue to make the argument for a fairer welfare system. Nigel Dawn. Thank the Minister for that response. I wonder whether she shares my concerns that not only is this very damaging to folk within Scotland, but there actually does appear to be a, a, a higher level of, of sanctions in, in, in different areas, in particular in Aberdeenshire in my constituency. Minister. Yes, I do share the members' concerns, and the crisis report did indicate that there were discrepancies uh, across the country in terms of the way sanctions were being applied. It also uh, illustrated that it didn't... Uh, 
determined, it wasn't determined by um, economic, um, com the economic geography of the area or the strength of the labour market or even whether the area is urban or rural. And this suggests that the DWP are not consist consistent in applying sanctions and further confirms that the system is unfair and unjust. As we have made clear, sanctions are causing hardship to many people in Scotland who are in difficult circumstances and who are often having to turn to food banks for help. The sanction system should be changed and replaced with one that is fairer and helps people rather than punishing them. Question 7, Annabel Goldie. To uh, ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to publish an oil and gas analytical bulletin. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Officer, the Scottish Government will publish an oil and gas bulletin once we have completed our analysis of the changes made in the UK budget and assessed the implications of these changes on investment and production. Annabel Goldie. <coughs> Presiding officer, some perspective helps here. The Scottish Government white paper estimated oil and gas revenues over the next four years at £27.5 billion. In May of last year, the Scottish Government boosted that to over £28 billion. Meanwhile, the Scottish Government mocked the OBR initial estimates for these four years of £14 billion, which yesterday were further revised down to £5 billion. Surely now is the time for the Scottish Government to show some contrition and humility, given the plunge in oil prices, and bring forward a new, more realistic assessment of oil and gas revenues, or is that too embarrassing? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, uh, what I'd say to uh, Ms Goldie, and I, I, I thought I'd covered it in my original answer, is that the government will consider the changes made in the United Kingdom budget, which of course have an effect on the revenues that can be realised because of the significant changes that were made yesterday. Of course, significant changes that reverse decisions that the Chancellor, he himself, had put in place in the first place in 2011, which is... Um, uh, which has contributed to the difficulties that the sector faces. So the government will uh, consider all of those issues. Uh, we will uh, ensure that the analysis is undertaken effectively and we will assess the implications of these changes on investment and production and publish the bulletin accordingly. Question 8, Cara Hilton. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what action has been taken to reduce cancer treatment wait referral waiting times for NHS 5 patients. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. Our cancer delivery team are working with NHS 5 to support performance recovery. Our performance recovery action plan has been developed and progress against actions are regularly monitored and updated. This includes 103,000, over 103,000 allocated through cancer modernisation and over 400,000 through the Detect Cancer Early in 2014-15 to NHS 5 to support diagnostic capacity and cancer services. Cara Hilton. I was contacted by a constituent recently who has been diagnosed with lung cancer and was referred for, for treatment at the Western General for radiotherapy and chemotherapy. She was told that she would get an appointment within two weeks, yet after six weeks she had heard nothing. She contacted her GP who discovered that the consultant she had been referred to was often long-term sick, so no action had been taken to schedule her appointment. Will the Cabinet Secretary take action to improve the referral process for cancer treatment within the NHS to avoid situations like this? Because right now it seems that not only do NHS Five uh, patients in NHS patients in five have the second longest waiting times in Scotland for treatment, but it looks that lives have been put at risk due to inadequate administrative arrangements too. Cabinet Secretary. Well, on this specific case that Cara Hilton raises, I will certainly look into that and I will write to her. I should say that on the 31 day uh, target, um, the NHS 5 have performed at 96.1%. So, although improvements have to be made, I think we should recognise that level of performance. There are issues within colorectal, lung, and neurological cancer types which are uh, causing concerns uh, within NHS. Fife. There are very, various reasons for that, including uh, some staffing issues. The support that has been provided with uh, senior management going out and visiting clinicians to understand the local challenges and, importantly, identify solutions for those challenges. The latest one of those took place on the, the 12th of February. So we will uh, continue to support NHS Fife to make those improvements, but I will write to her about the case that she highlights. Thank you. Uh, that ends general question time. We're now